You have just created your portal and prepared your properties and you notice the import button at the top right of your contact page and you say to yourself, cool, in a few clicks, I will be able to import my customer database to a spot and in five minutes, everything will be ready. You try it and nothing happens as expected. There are missing contacts, half of the information has been lost along the way, or simply a spot does not let you import your contacts. At the end of this video, you will know how to import any type of customer database smoothly, ensuring the transfer of 100% of your information. But in order to understand this video, you need to have some basics on how a spot portal works. You need to know what objects are in a spot. So I made a video explaining simply and clearly how a spot portal is organized and what are properties, how to create them and manage them. Similarly, I invite you to watch the previous video of this series to be sure that you have all the basics of understanding. Now that it's done, let's together look at the different methods of importing customer databases. You should click on this orange button and there you have a first choice to import a data file or to synchronize with another application. So this second option applies only when you want to migrate your data from an old solution to HubSpot. Each synchronization is different depending on the concern tool. And if this corresponds to your situation, I leave you to search for your old CRM and follow the methodology explained by the integration. However, the importation rules are the same as for the solution we will present today, which is the import file. So you click on it and then you need to choose import file from computer. You click on next and the next choice depends on the database to import. Either you have a CSV or Excel file containing both your contact, their company and all the associated information to import, or you have a file per object. For instance, you have a file with all your contacts, another one with all your companies, etc. In the vast majority of cases, if you have a file per object, it means that you already used a CRM before and therefore the synchronization feature will be way more advantageous for you. So I will focus on importing a single file for this video. If you want a video on importing multiple files, let me know in the comments and I will do it. So you need to click on one file and all that remains is to choose if your file contains a single object. So just a list of all your contacts, for instance, or if it also contains information on other objects associated to it. For instance, all your contacts and their companies in the same file. In the majority of cases, a spot portal uses several objects. So contacts and company for B2B, for instance, but even for B2C, you will find contacts and their deals. The truth is importing one object or multiple objects is really similar and it's a bit more complex to upload multiple objects. So that's what I will show you in this video. And in our case, we want to import a list of doctors and their clinics for our weight loss business. So we click on multiple objects, we click on next, and we need to choose the two objects we want to import. So as you see, you can import CRM object, sales object, and even activities, depending on what information you want to store in your HubSpot. In our case, what we want to import is doctors, so contact, and their clinics, companies. We click on next, and now it's time to manage our import file. Just a quick break to inform you that this video is part of a free training focusing on how to set up your HubSpot portal in the most efficient way possible. This free training will be divided into seven big modules, each addressing a specific key point of your HubSpot portal. And each module consists into several videos that will go deeper into a specific functionality or feature of your HubSpot portal. If it's not already the case when you watch this video, the videos in this series will be published gradually and they will be added to this specific playlist. I have also prepared a private web page bringing together all the different content of this free training and some additional bonus content. So to benefit of this free content and to be notified for every new chapter that is releasing, I invite you to click on the link in the description below. So why go back to our import file? Because we want this verification work. There is a strong chance that your import is incomplete or will become a failure. You must understand that each column of your file corresponds to a specific property in HubSpot. An import consists simply of taking each line, so here are doctors and their clinics, and for each line, all the values of each column and placing them in the corresponding properties. We must therefore ensure that each column that we want to import correspond well to a property in a spot. 
If it's not the case, you need to create the corresponding properties as explained in my previous video. So in our case, we only play with um, native properties, so we don't really need to do this work. But for this last property in H colon, we can see market. Market is not a native property, it's just a property we created to make sure we can separate our customer database with B2B clients, which are doctors, or B2C clients that are like direct consumers that buy our uh, weight loss product. So the easiest way to do it is to create a market property and to put in all our doctor's rows B2B. And that opens the next crucial point. All the values you put in this input file should respect the rules of the properties you have in HubSpot. So for instance, our market property is a drop-down menu property. So that's a property that gives us predefined choices. In our case, we can choose either B2B or B2C. If I try to import uh, one line with this value for market, the import will fail because a spot does not understand what this value is for. So it's really important to clean your import file at the maximum to avoid this kind of issue. Another example would be for annual revenue. Let's say it's a number property. So if I write 1000, let's say it's a text and a spot will not understand this property and will make this import fail. So please make sure all your values for each property correspond to the good rules. Once these two rules are respected, you can download your import file and upload it to your spot portal. So to import your files is really easy. Either you drag and drop your file in this box or you just click on upload and select the file on your computer. Then you just need to choose the different rules of importation. You can either only create new records, update new records, or do both at the same time. So most of the case, we do create and update contacts and create and update companies. But if we want, as it's a new portal with no data on it, we could have just cr uh, click on create new contacts only. It would not have changed anything. Then just select the language of the column headers in your file, then click on next and we arrive in the mapping page. So the property mapping is the most important part for a successful import. This is where you will be able to link a column of our file to a, a spot property. You need to be really careful to make sure that the column is well linked to the right property of the right object. In our case, we have the first name, which is a contact property and is mapped to first name. That's good. For last name, contact property, last name, perfect. Email, contact property, email, perfect. And phone number, same. As we can see here on the um, clinic domain name, is not automatically mapped by HubSpot. Why? Because we don't have a property that is exactly named like clinic website on HubSpot. So HubSpot doesn't understand what it's for. We need to think about what it really is. It's a company property because it's a website of a property. Um, it's a website of a company. And then we need to choose the good property. In our case, it's the domain name of the company because the clinic is a company of our contact in this example. We click on it and that's good. Now you can notice that for email in contact and for company domain, domain name in company, we have small keys. These keys means it's the unique identifier of a spot for this specific object. So every time we will do an import or modification, a spot will check on a contact the email. If the email is a known value, it means a spot will update the record. And if it doesn't know the mail, it will just create a new record. It's really important because it will avoid us to have a lot of duplicates. And it works the same way for the companies, but we don't use email, we use the company domain name. So that's why when you import companies on a spot, it's really important to provide the maximum company domain name you can. Now we can check the country property. So we can see that it's a property, um, it's a country, it's a contact property, so that's great. And it's mapped to country region, which is a native of spot property for country. So we can think, yes, it's good, no need to touch it. But if you watch my previous video on properties, you know that country region is a single line text property. And we don't want to use that because it will create a mess when we will want to segment our database based on that property. 
So that's why in the previous video, we created a new country property named country2, which is a drop-down menu, drop-down select. The idea is we make sure when we import our document that all the values of country are matching the one in AppSpot, so we will not find any issue during the importation. And because of that, we will be able to segment our database based on the countries. So that's perfect. And for the annual revenue, that's another issue you can encounter when you import data in your AppSpot portal is that he thinks it's a contact properties but we don't want to have the annual revenue of a specific doctor, we want the annual revenue of the clinic. So it's not a contact property, it's a company properties. And now we just need to find it for the company. And now everything is perfect. We create this uh, co contact property named market and a spot mapped it correctly. So once you verify one time, two times, three times that everything is matching, just, create, just click on next. You will need to agree that all contacts in this import are expecting to hear from your organization because a spot will not let you import contacts that you didn't have the right to import in the first place. So you just need to click on I agree if it's the case. You can choose your import name if you want to find it later on and you can choose the number format of your number properties. Once it's done, you click on finish import it can take a while based on the size of the import. In our case, it's just like eight lines. So I think it will be really short and it's already done. So what we can see, we have eight rows that are eight contacts and 13 new records because we have eight doctors, but we have also five different clinic websites. So five different clinic. So we see that eight contacts plus five cl um, clinics, everything is good. And eight associations, it means that uh, eight contacts have been matched with some companies. So it means every contact has its own company. That's perfect. So to check the result, you just need to go to contact page. You can see that you have all the eight um, contacts we import with all the information and they are associated to their good clinic. Another thing we can do is to go to companies and we can see that we have our five clinics. Just to make sure, you can click on one of those clinics and see that we have two um, contacts that are associated to this clinic. So it means that all the information and associations have been imported to HubSpot. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it's the case, don't forget to put a thumbs up, to subscribe to this channel and to save this playlist to make sure you don't miss any new chapter of this free training. And don't forget the link in the description below that gives you this free access to all the content of this free training plus more additional content on how to set up your Uspot portal in the most efficient way possible. For those who are discovering me through this video, I'm Grégoire, Uspot expert for more than seven years now, and I will see you very soon for more Uspot tips.